morning, breakfast day is at the Visit Food Hall. It's exactly what the name says, you know, it's like a gallery with uh, some places to eat, some open for breakfast, some don't. And we're here to try a typical Alabama biscuit. Yours, okay. yes ma'am. That's mine, right? That's yes, mine. This corner here is known as the heaviest corner on earth. That's because in the beginning of the 20th century, four tall buildings were built here basically at the same time. They were among the tallest buildings in the South. This is Morris Avenue, one of the oldest avenues in Birmingham, if not the oldest, and it maintains the original cobblestones on the street. This is a peanut store, and right here in front of it, you smell it. Oh my god. This was a street of produce. This was a street where you came to buy eggs and chickens and coffee and peanuts. And this business, the Peanut Place, has been on Morris Avenue for 110 years. It was started by my grandfather around 1907. If you look at this picture, um, the uh, shop owners and, and folks would come with their horse and buggy. It was a very busy street at the turn of the century. Uh, you would have heard all kind of uh, yelling and people selling goods. And you'd also have to watch your step because there were a lot of horses. Well, we're rotating, we're rotating peanuts over a fire. Uh, the fire is produced by gas. Approximately 3, 3, 375. Let me check my timer. Peanuts are ready. <laughs> We're going to try. A lot of people survived the, the Great Depression eating peanuts. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very good, very good protein yeah. and calorie source. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hot. Now we're going back to some history. This church here is a landmark in the civil rights movement. This was the first bombing. On this side, it represents the third bombing, and the second bombing was on the other side of the church. Three bombings, no loss of life. The bedroom was right here, so the bomb was right between the church and the house. This place to us is a very sacred place. It's sacred for a number of reasons. First, because it is a church, but also because it is a place where many believe, and I also believe the modern civil rights movement started. They were common, everyday, blue-collar people who came into this place every Monday night, and they stood for something. And the bombings also helped to solidify what they stood for. Uh, it was meant to cause them to be afraid, but it had the opposite effect. If a woman wanted to buy a hat, let's say it's coming up Easter or whatever, and I needed a new hat, in some department stores, you could not try the hat on. If they allowed you to try a hat on, they put a plastic bag over the lady's head, then allowed her to do it. But I want you to understand the humiliation faced every day. And you got to understand that every time the United States required anything of its citizens, it didn't ask if you are black, if you're brown, if you're white. If we were involved in a war, were blacks drafted? Did we go and fight? Of course we did. When it came time to pay taxes, did blacks pay taxes? Of course. If we're paying money for schools, why don't we have a school? If we're paying money for libraries, why can't we go? So this idea of just attacking segregation at all levels started right here at Bethel Baptist Church. The number one irritant on a daily basis was the, was the city bus. It was number one. Every, every day somebody was angry about what happens on the bus. And in Alabama and in Birmingham, definitely Montgomery, the bus driver had the same powers as a police officer. So if the bus driver gave you 
uh, an order, told you to do something and you didn't do it, then he could very easily have you arrested. So bus boycotts very, very common. Christmas in 1956 came on a Tuesday. So the Sunday prior to Christmas, Reverend Shuttlesworth told his, uh, his congregation that the day after Christmas on Wednesday, we're gonna ride the bus in an integrated fashion. And the, way, the reason he did that, the Supreme Court had ruled in November on the Montgomery case that segregation on buses was illegal. So he said, okay, so on Wednesday, we're gonna ride the bus. You put your money in and you sit down. People heard and found out about that. So Christmas night, he's sitting in his uh, bedroom. He gets a gift of 16 sticks of dynamite. He said he was actually just blown up with the mattress still up under him. He walks out of the back of that rubble house you see here. By then, there's a big crowd in front. The police got here within seconds. The very next day, he did what he said he was gonna do. About 200 people joined him in riding the bus. He was arrested, but he did what he did. This little light of mine. There's so much history here. It's impressive. And when you hear people talking about okay. everything that happened here, you just get so touched. But when people come, we try to get them to sign this to give us an idea about their visit and whether or not the information we provided for them actually enlightened them on the civil rights movement and the importance of Reverend Fred on Shuttlesworth and Bethel Baptist Church. So if you'll notice here, we have young people coming from Cambodia, from Laos. We have several university students. Penn State came recently. We had a family from Seattle, and I'm not sure where they are on the canvas, but we also had a family that come from Australia. Let it shine. I won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan the message. blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, 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 let it shine.